Yo guys, this is Sugi and thanks for joining me today on the Age of Empires 2 HD African Kingdoms Expansion Pack Review. And firstly I want to go over through the features that are included in the expansion pack. So we've got 4 new civilizations, 4 new campaigns, new generic units and technologies, a new sudden death game mode, a lot of new special real world and random maps, improved AI, 10 new terrains, new scenario editor objects, expectator mode and Twitch TV streaming integration. And let's go over the civilizations. So we got the Berbers who are from the Northern Africa, we got the Malians from West Africa, Ethiopians from the East Africa, and then we got the Portuguese. And they're not really from Africa, but they're kind of like, um, in terms of their campaign at least, they're really, I would say, uh, involved with a lot of the Africa. And of course they have colonies and everything like that during the times of where the, the times during these campaigns take place on. But let's talk about the units and stuff that buildings that we got included in this new expansion pack that you get to play as. Um, the Portuguese castle unit is called the organ gun. It's more like a siege weapon, I guess. Um, really strong, a really good one actually. We got the Jepto, which is the Malian's castle unit, a ranged infantry unit, very highly mobile. Uh, when it comes to infantry units, they throw like knives, so they're pretty much better than the archers and stuff like that. Then we've got the camel archers, which are kind of anti-cavalry, and they're of course cavalry unit themselves, and these are the Berbers castle unit. We've got the shuttle warriors, which are really like super highly mobile infantry units, and these are the Ethiopian castle units. And then we've got the secondary unique units, which are the caravel, which are the Portuguese ships, and we got the genitors, which are the Berber um, secondary units, which can be built from the archery range. They are like um, spear throwing horse riders. Then we got three new common units that are available for everybody or most of the most of the, uh, the civilizations. We got the fire galley and demolition demolition raft. These are ships. We got the siege tower, which can be like including ten units inside a. It's uh, in the siege unit, or no, it's not a siege unit. It's a siege tower. Sorry about that. And this can be built from the siege workshop. And we got a new building called the Fates Area, which um, has, you know, this is really strong. This is only for the Portuguese. It generates one resource every few rec every few seconds, and this is really strong when the resources are running out of the map. And I don't know if they actually stack if you build multiple ones, but really, really strong. And then we got new fauna like goats, zebras, elephants, ostrich, lions, and crocodiles. And two new common texts, which are arrow slits and arson. Arson are increased damage versus buildings for the infantry. Arrow slits increase the damage of the towers. And then there's the new sudden game, uh, sudden death game mode. And essentially, you got uh, like a town hall. They gotta protect it. I haven't tried it myself, but um, it, just from the descriptions, you have a town hall that I have to protect. If you, that gets destroyed, you lose, and it's really interesting, in my opinion. And um, you know, it's a good game mode from the looks of it. But let's talk about the campaigns a bit. So this is where the most of the review will be based on. Um, so there's four campaigns, each of them having five maps. So that's twenty maps. All the 19 maps except one was really long, so all of them took me multiple hours. I didn't take the exact hour count, but I would say um, easily 30 to 40 hours because some of the maps took, even some of the maps took me five hours. Granted, I'm a slow player. I kind of like to build defenses first and then start building my armies. That's kind of my play style, so that might really uh, affect how long the games last but that's pretty much like from my my point of view it took like 40 hours to play all the maps and some of them were really hard some of them well all of them had a difficulty there wasn't really any of them which was super easy maybe one so let's go over the campaign so the first one is the Tarigi Burn Ziad which is the Berber leader it's about their time going through the Pyrenees and essentially the Spain and France and conquering um, new lands. In all of these campaigns, you start with an army. So this is the easiest of the new campaigns. 
um, because you always have an army in the beginning and you don't get like rushed by your op op opponents and from that reason I think it's the easiest there was this uh, Pyrenees map which was the second last that was kind of hard but once you play it two times through you know the exact paths that will be easy map but essentially most of the maps were kind of easy because you started with an army and you didn't need to build much and you could just end the games usually with the starting armies and you got a lot of reinforcements and all that type of stuff and of course you get to play as a special unit the Tarigiban Ziad himself and um, other other character which is introduced I think he dies during the campaign well it's not really talked about but there's a two second leader in the half of the campaign or something the second campaign is Sunjata and he is actually his title is the Lion King and this is where the Disney movie is based on so um, he is Sunjata is a prince and there's a new guy who tries to take over his empire and he is forced to go to exile and then he comes back and kicks this guy's ass and that's pretty much the Lion King in a nutshell and um, it's a very interesting story it's the most compelling story out of the four I would say um, th there should be a movie about this not not the Disney one but um, another one with the realistic um, point of view um, this campaign was pretty hard the last only only this was the the last map of this campaign was the only one where I had to use cheats because I thought it was really impossible to actually win the last map um, from my point of view it was really really hard I I would love to see how people actually beat it I haven't w w looked walkthroughs or anything but um, essentially it was really hard the third one is a Francisco de Almeida which is the Portuguese not all of this is actually based on Africa, some of it's in India, um, but some of the maps are in the um, Red Sea. A lot of ships involved in these map, in these campaigns, some of the camp- This was probably the most fun campaign that I had to play, but there was, especially in this campaign, I think there was like few- Well, actually, in the whole campaign series, there were few maps where you could exploit stuff. There was a one map where I had to build a wander, and um, I built it on a remote island. And these people, the enemies would never come to that island, and, you know, I got scot free and won the map because I wasn't even contested for that type of thing. There's things, in, even though that in this expansion the AI was improved, there was a lot of exploits that you can do in these campaigns, which the the AI is not really good at playing against, like building walls. Because if you don't build towers or castles behind the walls, they kind of... They don't attack the walls themselves, usually. And that means they will leave you alone until you can just um, get away. And then there's some maps where you can build ships and they don't have even dockyards in those maps and you can stay safe for the whole game. This happened on the Yodi expansion um, in one of the maps. So there's few like AI exploits. But you know the difficulty is kind of like a roller coaster I would say. So it goes up and down, up and down. Some of the maps you could really exploit um, the AI and some maps you couldn't. And overall, like, all the maps last, like, multiple hours, so I could say this is, like, 40 hours. Granted, I'm a slow gamer, I kind of build defenses first, then I build the armies. I'm not so aggressive on my playstyle, so that might have affected how long some of the maps took me to complete. But essentially, yeah, I would say that, um, it take, like, 40 hours for me, at least. And the good thing about these campaigns is... In a lot of them, like in the previous campaigns, you get to choose different decisions. So you can destroy this guy or this guy, and that will affect how the map will turn out. You got those few campaign maps where you could have like decisions and play it out differently, which was really cool. And I kind of appreciate that in a in a design. So wrapping this expansion pack review up. Um, I think it was a great expansion. You got worth of your money. It's ten dollars or ten euros. 
you get a lot of hours in return of that while the mo while the four new civilizations were in like super interesting or the ones that i wouldn't play on a single player map or like online i still think that like the campaigns were really cool because they were voicing their story and history behind it and um the new like units were kind of cool and you got i haven't tried the random maps but you know it's a pretty good like a uh, deal for an expansion pack looking at what others are out there in the today's world um definitely subscribe to my channel i will be doing um the whole game review at some point in the near future among the other expansion this the forgotten and thanks for watching this review I will see you later. Cheers.